If investing for income is your goal, you might want to take a look at Enbridge, Inc. The company has raised their dividend for 22nd consecutive years in a row. And as you can see, the dividend has gone from $0.06 cents a share in 2001 all the way up to $2.81 a share in 2021 and expected to be increased again in 2022. The company is triple B plus rated and currently offers a yield to investors of 7%. Now, one thing about Enbridge, according to the website Shore Dividend, Enbridge is an oil and gas company that operates the following segments liquids pipelines, gas distributions, energy services, gas transmission and midstream, and also green power and transmission. And it's worthy to note that Enbridge bought Spectra Energy for $28 billion in 2016 and has become, as a result, one of the largest midstream companies in North America. The company was founded in 1949 and is headquartered in Calgary, Canada. And I'm going to be looking at this company in U.S. dollars today, but I do want to point out that you can look at this company in different ways. This is Chuck Carnival, co-founder of Fast Graphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. Once again, welcome you to one of our videos. I've been asked by a lot of subscribers to look at some high-yielding stocks like Enbridge and, and others. And so today I'm going to be covering Enbridge. It's a very high yielding stock, over 7%. And in the long run, it's actually had some pretty good performance. And I'll be getting into all that. And I'm also going to ask my son, Colton, to take a look at the company's financial statements and go through a quick financial um, statement presentation for you. Because I want you to look at this company by the numbers inside out. And anyway, let's go ahead and move to the fast graphs and let's look at Enbridge. As I mentioned, we're going to be talking about it in the U.S. version. The company is headquartered in Canada, as I mentioned previously. And what we're looking at here is U.S. numbers. Now, it also trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. And as you can see, the graphs are very, very similar. But this is in Canadian dollars. The previous graph is in U.S. dollars. Now, a couple of things I want to point out before I go any further. Earnings is not necessarily the best way to look at this because what we're talking about here is really a dividend-paying company. Now, long-term, their performance has been extraordinary. If we go back and look at performance in fast graphs and go back to January 4th, 2002, through October 19th, 2022, what you find out is that the company, $10,000, would have generated $38,646 in dividend income versus only $6,059 had you invested the same amount in the S&P 500. And growth or capital appreciation would have also been better. $10,000 would have turned to $56,000 versus $31,000. But I want to point something out. So we look at the last decade or so. I look at the last 10 years. If you look at Enbridge here, the company still outperformed the S&P 500 in, the, in terms of dividends, almost twice as many dividends, but it underperformed in capital appreciation. All right. So the reason I mention this is I talk about this as being an income vehicle. Now, part of the problem here, and this is, you know, really in my wheelhouse, is that the company back in the beginning of 2015 was dramatically overvalued looking at it from a perspective of earnings. But again, I'm going to talk about earnings per share is not the way to look at a company like this. So I'm going to talk about ways that, you know, we should be looking at it which since it's all about the dividend, we want to look at it from a standpoint of operating cash flows. And more importantly, I think you want to look at it from a standpoint are operating cash flows covering the dividend. And Enbridge operating cash flows, as you can see here, have covered the dividend very, very well. And, you know, that's going to be important. But I can also look at this from a perspective of valuation as well. And you can see that the normal market valuation over this time frame was about 10 times operating cash flow. That's the blue line on this graph. That doesn't mean it was always 10 times cash flow. It means that that's kind of like your average, you know, price to cash flow that the market applied. You can see there were periods where it applied a much higher one. And you can see it also there were periods where it only applied a single digit price to cash flow. Currently, the stock is trading at 9.01 times blended price to operating cash flow. And according to that, we'll talk about whether the stock is, you know, attractively valued or not. But a couple of things really encumbered the operating growth or the capital appreciation potential. One is valuations were real high 
back in 2012, 13, 14, and 15. And then second of all, the company really didn't grow very much during this period of time. In fact, even if we look at it since they bought, you know, Spectre Energy in 2016, which caused operating cash flow to actually go down that year, growth has been, you know, kind of mooted at around 5%. So I think that's very important. In other words, I don't think it's important to just look at a company's track record and say, oh, it underperformed or oh, outperformed, et cetera. I think it's equally important to know why the company performed as it did. But once again, as I mentioned earlier, I don't want to be looking at this company from a standpoint of earnings, because what you want to be looking at for several reasons, which we'll get into, is you want to be looking at whether cash flows are covering the dividends, because dividend safety is what this is all about. This offers a 7% plus yield right now, which is very attractive. And as I mentioned, they've raised their dividend, or maybe I haven't mentioned, for 27 consecutive years, which is a big plus if you're an income investor. So this is a way to get high yield, preserve capital perhaps, and actually because of the current valuation, which I'll get into, it also gives you an opportunity to make some capital appreciation right now at today's valuation. Before I get into all that, let me turn this over to my son, Colton, and let him take a quick look at the company's financial statement for you and go through some of these things that I want to be elaborating on further. If we look at their financial statements, so their net income is growing nicely and everything, but once again, this is pretty much in line with their dividends. They've got $5 billion in net income. This will just ignore that. that. That had to do with some big unusual expense, but... 5 billion, 4.3 billion. If we then look at the cash flow to look at their dividends, they're paying 5.6 billion, 5.1 billion, 4.7, 2.9 billion. And the issue with that is their shares outstanding are increasing. So look, went from a 911 million all the way to 2 billion shares outstanding. So they're diluting a lot, which means to keep their dividends per share at what it is, they have to pay more cash in dividends. So their dividends are becoming more and more expensive. If they wanted to drop that cash value that they pay in dividends, you know, this amount that I said right here, oh, where is it? Right here, this 5 billion, then they would have to be buying back shares and diluting less. Otherwise, you know, just think about it, dividends per share will drop, which will look like a dividend cut. But, you know, I mean, they've got room to cut. They've got 7% yield, so they definitely have room to cut. But the issue with paying for this is interest rates are obviously increasing. So now it's going to be way more money to fund it from debt. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole point of investing in a stock like this is for the dividend rate. Like, you don't really see growth of earnings that much. Earnings have grown 7.8% over the last 20 years, 3.1% over the last... 11 years. Well, this is including estimates. So really 4.45 over the last 11 years, you know, dividend increases nicely. The dividend average growth rate on that has been 11%. So, you know, once again, that dividend growth rate was great. I mean, operating cash flow, they definitely generate it. Those are my kind of two cents of at least the dividend right now. All right. Thanks, Colton. Appreciate that discussion. So as you can see, Enbridge does have some dilution issues. That's one thing that, you know, you need to be aware of. So, you know, the company has been issuing shares recently. Now, one of the things that I think is important when you're looking at the company is now if I go into some other websites here and look at the company from the standpoint of conducting further research, you know, I'm a firm believer that fast graphs is one of the most powerful investing tools you could use as the first step in determining whether you should even be looking or researching a company or not. But beyond that, we also have made it simple for you, the subscribers who are subscribers, to be able to learn more about the company very easily. For example, if you're a subscriber, these are links that you can go to directly from FastGraph. So I am a Zaxx and Morningstar subscriber, so I'm going to go into Zaxx first of all. And Zaxx does cover the company and they do an analyst report. And so I can go in here now and I can read about the information about it. And I can, you know, they give you reasons why you should buy the stock. But in all fairness, they also talk about reasons why you should sell. And, you know, they are politics, I think, is one of the biggest risks. We all know what's going on with energy and we all know what's going on in Canada as well as the U.S. So there are some issues that you want to watch out for. But generally speaking, because this is such an important 
distributor of you know oil and gas, primarily liquids and gas distribution. The company's probably in a very good position to continue to prosper and, and offer. So, you know, the dividend does look relatively safe from that point of view. But there are other websites you can go into as well, other than Zach's. You can also go through Fast Graphs and look at things like Morningstar, okay? And Morningstar will give you some information here. And, you know, you can go through the whole article here. If you're a subscriber, you have to be a subscriber to see what I'm going to show you here. But I'm going to look at Morningstar and I'm just going to look at, you know, their view of dividends and see what, you know, Morningstar is saying about the, the dividend on Enbridge. If I go into the fair value and profit drivers, you will see that they result in a 7% average EBITDA growth at the end. And so therefore, they also believe that EBITDA growth, which I'll talk more about EBITDA here in a minute, will also produce the opportunity for the company to continue their you know, dividend streak. Now, another thing that's very important is on the buyback front, although they've been issuing shares recently, they bought back 3 million shares in 2022 for about $150 million. And they also have instituted a very strong buyback program currently, which I am in favor of because the company currently is so cheap. So the dilution that we've been facing in the last decade or so is probably going to get a little bit better as we get, as Colton talked about, you know, you're facing a higher interest rate market and you're also going to look at things like debt and so on when you're looking at this company. But again, I'm going to leave that up to you to go ahead and look at. But the point I wanted to make is the company has been dilutive. So when you're looking at it from a standpoint of the dividend safety, I want to go back into the fast graph here and I want to look at operating cash flow. And I want to point out that the dividend is being you know, very, very well covered by operating cash flow over the last decade or so. But most importantly, operating cash flow is expected to grow very nicely in 2022 and then continue to grow in 2023. So if I go into the forecasting calculators and I look at the normal multiple, which is the more conservative look, over the last five years, Enbridge has traded at about 9.9 .9 or 9.89 times cash Cash flow. Again, currently is trading at nine times cash flow. So what we see here is the company is slightly undervalued on that basis right now because it's obviously been trading at that multiple or higher. So if I went and looked at the normal 9.89 multiple, that would indicate about a 22.98% you know, possible rate of return based on expectations for cash flow growth. If I went out a little bit further and went out to the end of 2024, it would still be 15.76%. Now, I want to take a pause here and talk about analyst estimates. You know, there are seven analysts that follow the company, and so I want to check the analyst scorecard. And I do want you to note that the company does have a pretty good analyst scorecard overall. The analysts get this company right most of the time. Now, that doesn't mean it's perfect. They did miss the estimates by about 10% on the one-year forecast last year, but on the two-year forward forecast, they've actually have a much better record and it's been much better over the last five or six years or so, especially since they bought Spectra Energy. You know, they bought it in 2016 and they've had really almost a perfect record since they did that. So the thing about analyst estimates are these are the leading analysts that follow the company, okay? And they're collected by companies, in our case, by fact set. You can also go look at other sources for, you know, these estimates. And the thing is, am I saying these estimates are going to be perfect? No. But I am talking about getting information from the people that are paid to follow these companies professionally and who are also spend a lot of time examining the company and talking to management. And management tends to try to guide as conservatively as they can because it's never in the interest of management, in my humble opinion, for them to forecast a very high you know, result, a very strong result, and then come in with much lower numbers. That usually will kill their stock and kill their reputation at the same time. So this is a good starting point. But then again, I encourage you to go in and do your own due diligence beyond this. And again, we facilitate in Fast Graphs by giving you immediate and quick access to many other sites where you can learn, you know, other people's opinion, other analysts' opinion, This and Seeking Alpha, they do crowdsourcing. And, you know, you can learn more about the company. You can get into the news on the company. You can go into the Wall Street Journal directly from Fast Graphs and many other sites because you want to research it more thoroughly. Now, I've done a lot of that work already. 
In my opinion, I like Enbridge. I think it's very attractive at these current levels. If it was trading at a normal, you know, price to cash flow valuation of around 15, there'd be tremendous upside. But even staying with a very conservative number of around, you know, just under 10 times cash flow, I think the company still looks attractive. And you know, as I showed you earlier, that's been a you know really good benchmark. Now, the, now the company did dip below that on several occasions, but it always recovered. Growth expectations going forward are expected to be a little better than they've been in the recent times. But again, this is not necessarily a capital appreciation vehicle because it doesn't grow very much because you always want to look at growth. It does offer a very high dividend yield, and it does have a very excellent long-term dividend record, and it does have a very strong commitment to dividends. Okay, so, you know, I think that's something you want to take into consideration because um, the website Sure Dividend in our most recent research report pointed out that it's a leading midstream player in North America, and they tout a solid growth outlook over the coming years. Enbridge does feel like they have a good growth going forward. They delivered record distributable cash flow generation in 2021, and again, it looks like cash flows are going to be even better or higher during the current year as additional growth projects enter service. So the total return outlook, they feel, is very solid, as I pointed out a minute ago. And I agree, because there's a difference in buying Enbridge when it's expensive, like it was back in 2015, and versus buying it when it's inexpensive, like it is currently. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool, bringing you the highly requested Enbridge, you know, a very high-yielding investment. Remember, this is all about investing for the income. Although now would be an opportune time where this company could deliver you some capital appreciation on top of the income, but the dividend record looks very good. Now, there are political risks, as I pointed out, and other risks with this company, but I do believe it's well-established and well-positioned. It's got a triple B-plus credit rating, you know, one step short of an A. So I think things look pretty good for this company going forward. If you're looking for a high yield or a higher yield, then you can get off a lot of other investments now, even in this rising interest rate environment, Enbridge may fit the bill. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, get, ring the bell, give me a like, subscribe to the website, but also take a look at subscribing to FastGrass. I couldn't even imagine investing in stocks without the benefit that this brings you. Thanks for watching.